What's going on everybody and welcome to part 7 of the Django tutorials where we left off we created a user registration page and now what we want to do is allow for our users to notice right when something has happened so when they log in or when they register they should just be logged in and see that they've been logged in and then also when things go wrong they should see like errors and know what went wrong that sort of thing so uh, to do that what we're gonna do is mostly inside of our templates I'm trying to think well we do have a couple of things we'll have to pass in views but for most of our work today we're gonna be working uh, in our templates so uh, first of all let's go into views and do what I was saying so we'll go to the tippity top here and all we need to import here is the messages from Django so a lot of web frameworks are going to give you some way to like um, send unique messages to your users so there's just so many times when you want there to be some way to pop up a little message uh, for all sorts of reasons but maybe we log in register hit some sort of error whatever okay so uh, with Django that's no different we're gonna say from Django dot contrib import messages not error messages why did you do that to me <laughs> messages jerk okay so once we've got the messages then we can come down to say register for example user form dot save you might say something like this messages dot success and uh, this would be to the specific request so this will always go to the exact user that's supposed to get this message so you could add something that would be like site-wide and you could do it through messages by just like always passing a message uh, but probably if you want to have some sort of site-wide notification system like maybe you're doing updates or you're getting DOS or something like that uh, and you want to just notify your users that something is up uh, then I would I'm not sure I would use messages I would probably put something in the header file that just kind of sits below the nav bar or something like this this is really for specific users but you could use it for whatever you want I suppose anyways uh, request and then we can say something like this we could say uh, new account created and then uh, the account will be oh we need to give it the username I, I knew we were gonna use it but anyway we'll say username equals form dot cleaned data dot get uh, username username and anytime you have something like this like form dot cleaned data we if you if you want to know exactly what's going on uh, you could just literally type that in working with form and then let's see let's Google cleaned whoops cleaned data I'm hoping to eventually get here oops let me go back to where we were hopefully <laughs> um, normalizing it to a consistent format um, I'm guessing I'm trying to decide I don't actually know if they'll remove like crazy characters and stuff like that I am kind of curious I wish it would tell you uh, exactly what that method does when it cleans cleaned data form .clean data also cleaning it normalizing it to a consistent format I'm assuming it's not like escaping uh, for like SQL stuff I'm, I'm guessing the models or handles that on its own I am curious I'm not actually seeing the answer here uh, each form is responsible for validating but also cleaning it I would really like to know clean data huh I would be curious to know more uh, I really thought I was gonna find the answer to that but no <laughs> anyway um, that's just general you are going to almost always clean data then get username so this will be uh, the user's username and then we'll say uh, request new account created and then we're gonna give the user name so at this point uh, we'll 
this all this does is the messages now exists like there we are not delivering that message in any way it just exists okay um so it's going to be stored and then later we're going to have to like retrieve these messages and basically the messages will only exist initially and then once they're served they're gone so uh anyway so we'll say new account created and then username for example and then coming down here possibly here for like form.error messages rather than print form.error messages or whatever we could instead say uh, messages.error uh, <clears throat> request and then literally the exact same thing um and i kind of uh man i got this like itch on my neck I think what I'd like to do actually is make this an F string and then colon this. Because I'd like to see the key as well. So here we'll just, the error message will literally be the key, colon, and then the value. So we'll get all of the information. Let me add a space there. Okay. Good enough. Um, and then just for the record, there's like success, info, debug, error, and I think warning or something. Like I think, I'm thinking that's, that's the one. Anyways, uh, we'll cover those here in a minute. And you can handle them in all different ways. And again, I'll, I'll cover that as well. So our view is completed. So now what we want to do is the, this message is getting passed. It is now a part of the request, but we have to still access that request and say display that message. And the way I would like to display that message is if we go to materializecss.com and we go to G uh, whoops, <laughs> JavaScript and come on down to toasts. So if I click this button, it shows you an example of a toast like this is it. Boo, 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 boo. And we would just like one of these to pop up with the message that we're trying to give to our user. So uh, as you can see, uh, I'm trying to see if there's like a really basic one. I think I might just here, toast. And this one just has call, callbacks and stuff. Anyway, it's just a script where you pass m.toast. Um, yeah, basically this right here. So inside of script tags, you'll pass that. But I'll show you guys how we're going to do it anyways. So um, now what we want to do is, so we, we could do this inside of register uh, here. But we probably actually want to handle for messages site-wide, right? Because the messaging system is for everywhere on your website. So instead, actually, I would handle for them inside of the header.html file. <clears throat> so likely, likely within the container, you might opt to not do it in the container. I, I'm not really sure where I would rather have it, to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm going to start with it in, because I almost don't, I think I might actually do it outside the container. I don't know. <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter. It's going to depend on what, probably really mostly on what type of device your website is going to be used on most. Um, but with the container like full size, the you know, most of the content sits in the more like the center, so there'd be plenty of space for the for the message to pop up top right. If it's outside of the container, it's not going to cover anything. So I think that's actually what I'm going to do. Anyway, um, so the way that we can do this is first with an if statement. So we're going to just ask if messages. So if there are any messages, so then we have to end if. Now, if there are messages, we want to iterate over the message so for message in messages and then don't forget to end your for uh, now we want to display the message so this is just a script script and what we will say is m actually it's a capital m dot toast and then there's like a bunch of these parameters that we can pass into here. Um, so I'm just going to do this. So HTML, this is the actual HTML that you want to pass. And in this case, it's just going to be <clears throat> the message. 
then there's all kinds of things that we can add. So for example, you could say classes, and this will be classes as in your, uh, your CSS. So for example, I could say blue, and then you also can round it. So I'll say blue and rounded. So it won't be a square, it'll be kind of like a little rounded message. Then we can also add a display length. This is how long will the message show. So and this is in milliseconds, so this will be two seconds. <clears throat> now, um, I think that's good enough. What we will do is test it. And in fact, let me first make sure toasts work at all. So I'm gonna just paste one in real quick. Come over here, ref I don't really wanna do that. Hold on, let me come over here. Oh, interest. Oh, because there's no message. <laughs> so that was our, because uh, this message variable doesn't exist. So toasted. <clears throat> okay, now if we refresh, there's your, you know, your blue rounded toast. And you can dismiss them by like swiping them away. Otherwise, it just disappears in two seconds. Uh, you also can, um, somewhere, someone in here, they did have a dismiss. Maybe this? Let's see if this has it. I'm a, no. Oh, <laughs> that's a callback there. Toast with action. How about this? There you go. So you could you could use like a button to dismiss it as well if you wanted, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to have it show up for a period of time. Okay, so the toast is working now. Um, oops. Cool. Now, the thing is, I really would like to have these different, like your class, blue, that's the background. Well, wouldn't it be nice to have like information and error Error, error, warning, that kind of stuff, be different colors, right? D depending on the severity of the message, you also might want to display it for a different amount of time based on the importance of that message. So the way uh, that we're going to do that, um, I don't think I am, I don't see any benefit to writing this one out. So I'm going to copy pasta this from the text-based version of the tutorial. Link is in the description, so just grab that. Um, I just don't, I just think it'd be a waste of our time. Uh, there's really no new logic here. So anyway, let's paste that in. So now we have handling for success, info, warning, and error. I'm pretty sure there is a debug. <laughs> um, but anyway, good enough. Cool. So now it handles for precisely what type of error it is. Because So we've got like success and info. So we could come over uh, to our uh, views.py uh, account created, so success, and then maybe let's do a messages.info when someone logs in. So messages.info logged in to user. You are now logged in as username, maybe no colon, cool. Uh, uh, okay, cool. So now let's come over to our website and register a new user. We'll do syntax three. Oh man, I <laughs> fat fingered that one. Let's try again. Register. Oh, get out of my way. Dang it, it got in my way. <laughs> uh, anyway, they were there. One was green and one was blue. Um, maybe I could hit never and that wouldn't have happened. Anyway, uh, great. So that worked out pretty well. The next thing I'd like to do is just show a different looking navigation bar once the user uh, has logged in. So the next thing we're gonna do is come back to our header.html and we'll come over to our nav bar, which is all right here. So uh, we would still, I mean, the logo should stay the same, home button can stay the same, but really here, uh, this should be different depending on these two things this should be different depending on if the user is logged in or not So what we can ask is um, If user dot is authentic Authenticated if user is authenticated uh, We show something Else And then we will end Whoops and our if statement so I'm just going to take this, tab it over, copy, come down here, oops, tab that over, copy, paste. Okay, so if the user is authenticated, they're logged in, they don't need to register anymore. They might have, um, I don't know, an account page. Um, so maybe head to slash account, and then we could even call this their username. So um, I think user dot 
username would probably work here. I don't really actually know. Uh, I think that's probably good enough. And then here, rather than log in, it should be log out. Log out. Maybe we'll capitalize that L as well. Okay. Uh, all right. So now let us head back on over. Let's refresh. Okay, cool. So now it shows the username and log out because this user is logged in. Now we don't actually have log out handling yet. We will um, probably do that in the next tutorial because first I want to talk briefly uh, about handling now for all of this. So as like part of the reason why we're using these templates is so stuff doesn't take up so much space and our header is actually pretty darn simple. But as we continue to have like logic like all this, it starts taking up a lot of space. So how do we fix for that? Well, what we can do instead is have our nav bar, for example, in its own file, and we can have like messages in its own file, in their own file. So the way that we're going to do that is um, we'll come over here to templates, and then I like to put a new directory inside of templates called includes because you might have a lot of templates and you might have a lot of includes. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy home and I'm going to paste that into includes. And then I'm going to call this one uh, navbar, navbar. Okay. And then I'm going to come back uh, into here, into includes, and let's open up navbar. So inside of here, um, and in fact, actually, I'm pretty sure with includes, you don't need block content. We're going to find out. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't. So for navbar, let's just take the navbar code. So from nav to nav, cut, paste, save that. And then where our nav bar used to be, we're going to add a quick message here that just says include. And then it is the path to the nav bar starting at templates. So main includes navbar.html. Okay, so we'll come over here, refresh, refresh, refresh. Okay, looks the same, no difference. Okay, but we've saved a lot of space. Let's do the same exact thing for messages. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy paste. I'm going to change this to messages. We're going to open up messages, delete messages. We'll come over to header and we will cut messages, paste messages, and then come over here. Um, and in fact, actually, let's just copy and paste this paste. Nav bar, messages, save that, great, refresh, everything appears to, oh, but logout's not going to work. Also curious, why, okay, I guess it was just taking a while. <laughs> I was like, why didn't it error? Uh, so let's just register again. So we'll just register sent dex four, uh, P, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, register. Okay, cool. So we create a new uh, user. That's interesting. Why did that happen? Is that be? It might be because of the styling, because we're eventually going to put a nav bar over here. Is that what I've done? <laughs> All right. We'll have to look into that later. I'm not really too worried about that. Anyway, for now, um, yeah, I wonder if somehow that's messing up the container. I don't know. I'll, I'll look into that for sure. Anyways, now our header is way cleaner. It's only 25 rows and that's a lot of wasted space actually. So we could just do this or something. Anyway, much, much cleaner, much, much simpler. If we want to modify something or continue building on this, it's just so much quicker for us to read. You obviously could go way too far overboard as far as, you know, putting things in includes and stuff like that. But I think if you're going to get rid of like 10 lines of code or, or something like that and like a bunch of logic and stuff, it's just better to pull it out because you're also highly likely to start making mistakes with like div opening and closing or other tag opening and closing. So this is just one way to much further simplify things because in your editor, a lot of times you can, like if I come over here and um, if I highlight this, it shows me where the closing tag is. But as your tags get really complex, it, like in Sublime, it messes up, especially as you start using the Jinja templating. And uh, I've seen it mess up in other things. And plus, with your if statements, you might close a tag somewhere. And most editors don't understand what the heck is going on there. Uh, so it can get really confusing really quickly. So anyways, um, that's one way we can clean it up. 
So, um, awesome. So at this point, I think I'll leave you guys. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll work on uh, logging out. Quick shout out to my most recent channel members, AF Richard, C Ran Care Not a Fish, or Cran Car E Not a Fish. Anyway, Pro and Prodigy, thank you guys very much for your support. You guys are awesome. And other than that, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'm going to see you guys in another video.